Hi, today we are going to talk about the supernatural power of God based on the scriptures. There is a power in our words. Today we are going to discuss about the the, the power related to the scriptures and especially we are talking from the gospel of Mark and gospel of Matthew. Uh, Pastor Jim is going to say uh, many things related to the Gospel of Matthew. Pastor Jim, can you share about the power of our words? Well, there's so much power in the words we speak because when you stop and realize that God created everything by words. He created all things, but he said in Genesis chapter 1, let there be, and he was. Let there be light, and it was light, and on and on. You read the first chapter of Genesis. When he came to verse 26, he said, Let us make man in our image. It was plural because he was a father talking with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Somebody just like us. Somebody who can think and talk just like us. So he created human beings, and he gave us power in our words, and he said that whatever you say, it shall be done for you. Speak words and realize that you have power when you speak the words. So that's why a lot of us believe in the words that we speak. And you go to, you have to be very careful the words you say. You know words can build you up, can wreck you up. People say the bad words, others say the good words. I've known of examples where fathers spoke bad words to their children and they became wrecks. And I know examples where the fathers be blessing their children all their lives and they grow up to be leaders in society because it's very valuable the words you speak. For instance, in Matthew chapter 12, this is what our Lord Jesus said, Pastor Kigley. Yes. He says, a good man mm-hmm. out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word man may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. That's how powerful Jesus knew the words. You never see Jesus speaking a bad word anywhere, did you? No. And how, uh, how amazing, you know, the examples he gave us. Hey, amazing, Lord. because our words has the power. The bird, with the, our words will determine your future so i would like to encourage you use always good words in your mouth don't allow any kind of negative confessions from your mouth the words can destroy you not only that the words can build you up words can bring blessings in your life especially i was going through mark chapter 11 um, this this um, story is what uh, there, there was an inter- interesting story was mentioned in Mark chapter 11. One day Jesus was uh, going through the uh, next uh, fig tree, going to the Bethany from verse 2, I think uh, Mark chapter 11 verse 2. Now the next day when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry, Jesus was hungry. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, but went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing to nothing but leaves, for it was not the season of for fix. In response, Jesus said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And disciples said, Look at that. In this um, um, passage, Jesus came to the uh, Bethany, then he was hungry. At that time, he was hungry, he found a fig tree. He went to the next to the fig tree, he found no fix. Immediately Jesus spoke to the fig tree and said, Let no one eat fruit from your you again. Look at that. Jesus used a word to yes. against that yes. fig tree. Actually, uh, when we st- f- study um, the from 21 words. The next day, what happened? They were going through the, the same place. Immediately, the disciples recognized that the fig tree was dried up from the roots. 
verse 20 now in the morning as they passed by they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots and peter remembering said to him rabbi look the fig tree which you cast withered away so jesus answered and said to him have faith in god for assuredly i say to you whoever says to this mountain be removed and be cast to the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that those who thinks he will he will say it will be done he will have whatever he says hallelujah look at that jesus was teaching a lesson to the disciples he was demonstrating the power of the words jesus cursed that fig tree bible says immediately is dried away from its root the next day they were passing immediately peter said rabbi the fig tree whatever you cursed it's withered away from its root hallelujah there is a power in your words so be very careful you have to release the words from your mouth yes bavas ji what yes. do you want to say on on, the, on that uh, verse there mark 11:23 mm -hmm. jesus said i said to you that whoever says to this mountain be removed and yeah. be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that those listen to that things which he says will be done if if he will have he will have whatever, whatever he, says. he says three times yeah, says. says he doesn't say whoever thinks about it yeah. oh i wish that mountain will move away we got to speak the word that's what the power is yeah. the word of god the same with the whole world of god yeah. it has no power unless it's until it's spoken yeah otherwise it's just a book yeah but the moment you speak the word of god or in any subject power comes and especially this verse here we use it all the time that uh, we are very careful how we speak to every situation in life i mean every situation if you look for instance in proverbs chapter 20 verse 18 it says life and death are in the power of i think about but proverbs 18 verse 20 mm -hmm. life and death are in the power of the tongue yeah. and they who love it will eat its fruit so that means that you can speak life and you can speak death with your tongue that's how important it is to be careful i've heard of people they was i mean and he was coming over in front of us when we were evangelizing on the street and uh, he was a nobody. And I said to him, I said, has your father ever blessed you, said a good word to you? He said, never. He says, if anything, he said bad words to me. And uh, if you look at that boy, you realize that he was defeated by everything in his life. Now, what would be the opposite now? If his father would give a blessing to him, he would be blessed if you spoke to him my son be blessed be blessed you know so it was a girl again who i asked her has your father ever blessed you she laughed at me and she said ha my father says he wouldn't even know what it meant to say a blessing to me and uh, i said to her to her what about if you go home and ask him dad give me a blessing please and she said he will laugh at my face this is how terrible it is that a father hasn't got a clue how to bless his daughter with words. Never learned. Nobody taught them. That's how powerful words are. You can speak life and death, as it says in Proverbs. With your tongue, I tell you what, you can kill a person with words. And sometimes they say words are, are more piercing than a knife. Because they go right to your spirit and to your soul. And can destroy your whole life. It's so important brothers and sisters to speak words that build and edify people in every aspect of their lives amen look at that there is a power in the words even why the words has power when we look at the genesis when god created the universe the god created the earth and everything he used the words mm. he never used anything else mm. he never used his hands he never used his actions bible says he spoke the word let let it be there a light immediately the light came he used the words to create and establish the universe he never done anything he never done any hand any other works he used only the words that means there is a, there is a power in our words so that's why we have to be very careful what we allow through our mouths bible says the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks yes. 
Am I correct? Yes. 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 See, whatever we speak, we are speaking from our heart. Sometimes people used to speak all, most of some people, they used to speak discouragement words. Uh, how it is going to be, uh, the recession is going to be, the world is ending, uh, no hope, no future. The people used to turn into the negative side of the world. But yeah. if you stand in the word of God, you should, uh, you can't be in that negative part of the world. Instead, you stay in the positive side with, along with the word. So first of all, what do you need? What you need? You need the word of God in your heart. If you don't have word of God in your heart, what will happen? Always, you will speak the bad things from your mouth. So it's very important. Your words should align along with the word of God. For, for that, what you need to do? You need to read the word of God. You need to meditate the word of God. So if you do this, I'll tell you, your mouth always speak good things. The good words can nourish your future. But the word, bad words can destroy you and your future. Always use the good words to bless someone instead of cursing. Always bless the people. Uh, bless your body. Bless your finances. Bless your family. Bless yeah. your wife. Bless your children. Yeah. Bless your yeah. church. Even bless your enemies. That's, yes, the, that's, right. that's, yeah, that's right. the thing. Jesus uh, teaches we should not curse. We are not, uh, pro we are not made to curse anyone. What we have to do, we have to bless others. That's why we have to love everyone with our own heart. So, Pastor Jim, what do you want to say about well, that? Well, look how powerful words are. For instance, do you realize you can only be saved by speaking words? I'll tell you what I mean. Look to Romans chapter 10, verse 9. The Apostle Paul writes that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God has raised you from the dead, you will be saved. For with a heart one believes unto righteousness, and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. You know, when we ask people to say the sinner's prayer, they have to repeat that. Mm -hmm. You cannot be saved just by thinking only. You've got to confess it. You've got to say, I love, it. Say, I love you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, and on and on. You know, when we ask them to say the, the sinner's prayer. Because otherwise, you cannot just see words. For instance, as Pastor Kigley just said a little bit about people are worried and talk about bad things. They hear on the news of bad things all the time. Like, oh, inflation is rising up, the interest is rising up, the petrol is rising up, the cost of living is rising up. Where is Albanese going to do something? Blah, 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 blah. Talking negative all the time. Instead of saying, I don't care what rises, God says, I am the source of your supply. And you say, I speak words that even though inflation and interest are rising up, I will override them because I speak the word of God. And when you speak the word of God, blessings come unto you. As Pastor Kingsley says, bless your family, bless your wife, bless your children, and bless your enemies. That is so far. It's very hard to bless an enemy. But <laughs> if you go out of your way to bless the enemy, what happens? You will receive the blessing. It is so powerful. Hallelujah. Oh, the word of God so vital. Jesus knew the words everywhere. What did he do? Just read the Gospels. You see, he went. A person came to him, Bartholomeus. He was blind. He was crying. Master, Master. Actually, he heard Jesus was passing by and he started crying loud. Rabbi, Rabbi, Master, Master. They all tried to hush him down. Shut, shush, be quiet, be quiet. He said, no, I will not be quiet. He says, the Master is passing by. And Jesus heard. So he went and called him to himself and he said, Bartholomew, what do you want me to do for you? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. What did Jesus say? Receive your sight. Did he just look at him and said nothing? Take the other example. When Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, he came to the sisters and they said, first of all, they told him that Lazarus is sick. And Jesus took four days to go there. I believe he did it on purpose because he was going to show God's power. Well, it's four days, four months, four years, means nothing with God. He's got a power to do anything, and he saw some glory. And so, it took four days, and when he arrived there, his Lazarus sister met him and said, Oh, my Lord, if only you were here earlier, my brother would not have died. Jesus said, Martha, Martha, I am the resurrection, I am the life. 
And she said, oh yeah, he resurrected the resurrection. No, no, he says, I am the resurrection. I am the life. Where have you laid him? So they took him to the tomb where he was. But she said to him, but now he stinks because the human body decomposes after three days. She said, it's been four days since he's been dead. But Jesus said, I am the life. And what, what, then what did he do? Just look. He said like this, raised his hands and his eyes to heaven. And he said three words. He said, Father, I thank you that you always hear me. Because he knew the Father heard him all the time because he was very close to God. And then he says, but for their sakes I say that. Then he shouted out. What did he do? He called words and said, Lazarus, come forth. stand up or come forth. If he said dead man rise, all the dead in the, grave would, in the graves would have risen. <laughs> he said, Lazarus, come forth. And he was dead, stood up and walked. Jesus spoke the words because he knew he's the originator from Genesis when he taught us how to use words. Something the church has lost, something people have lost, something the world has lost. There's a the power in the words. They only know how to curse some people, I'm sorry. Yes. They don't know how to bless. Yeah. So yeah, that's amazing, especially uh, <coughs> Pastor Jim was talking about from John chapter 11. That's one of my favorite mm. uh, um, uh, passages. Mm. You know, G Jesus spoke to Lazarus. Actually, Lazarus was buried. He was in the tomb over mm -hmm. four days. Then uh, Jesus gave, a, in, gave an instruction to the disciples. First of all, he said, move the stone. See, the stone means that's the dead end of a person if a person put a if after burial service um, according to the jewish tradition they used to uh, place a heavy stone in the mouth of the tomb uh, once the seal like a ceiling once they put the seal no one can come out even the dead person also cannot come out mm -hmm. see he was lazarus was in the tomb for four days first of all jesus said move the stone See, Jesus saw that he had seen there is a stumbling block in between resurrection and, uh, and the life. See, Jesus saw that there is a block that, that was a stone. Then Jesus told to the disciples, move the stone. He uh, immediately, I believe that some, some people helped, helped him to roll the stone from the, um, from the um, tomb. See, look at that. If you have any kind of stones in your life, I'm talking about spiritual stone, that could be a stumbling block for your miracle. You may pray for a long time for a breakthrough in your life, for a blessing or a financial breakthrough or some kind of breakthrough in your relationship, on your marriage or in your career. But I'll tell you, if now there is, if you feel any kind of blocks standing in between you and God, what do you have to do? You have to remove that stone. If you don't remove that stone, you are not going to receive that blessings or breakthrough in your life. Look at that. When Jesus looked at that, he have seen a stone kept in front of Lazarus. First of all, Jesus said, before he raising Lazarus from the dead, Jesus said, okay, remove the stone. Then few people went, went and helped him. He, they removed the stone. I'll tell you, some stones you cannot roll away by yourself. You have to use the spiritual help. That's why God kept pastors, evangelists and apostles and prophets in the kingdom of God. Many times we don't uh, understand, we, we don't realize the importance of people who our uh, God kept, uh, kept in our life. See, look at that. Sometimes your stone is very hard for you to push. In this situation, Lazarus couldn't uh, he's not able to, he was not able to push, remove the stone by himself because he's dead. But Jesus uses some people to ro roll the stone. So if you are anyone is having any kind of stones, what do you have to do? Today you have it to take a decision, you are going to remove that stone. If you are not able to uh, remove your stone by yourself, what do you have to do? You have to seek for some spiritual help. You have to um, help depend upon you have to ask some help from spiritual people i mean some pastors or evangelists you go and seek some divine help definitely they are able to help you today at the end of this session we are going to pray if anyone is having that kind of stone god is going to remove that stone 
that mountain or whatever you are facing he is able to remove that stone from your life it could be a depression it could be an addiction it could be a mental stress whatever it is nothing is hard for our god the power of the super the supernatural power of the holy spirit is going to break every kind of chains and every kind of problems we are releasing the power of the holy spirit we are ministering the power of the holy spirit we no one can hold the power of the holy spirit i'll tell you if you release the words with the power it will penetrate every area you're going to come out from that stone the stone is going to move under the anointing you do today you're going to receive that kind of uh, power in your life so we are going to come back to uh, to the uh, subject we are talking about the power faithful words there's a power in our words pastor jim what do you want to say about uh, resurrection of lazarus one thing Pastor Kidley, people forget to realize that when he said roll the stone away, the stone away, what he actually meant is for them to do the physical part. You do the physical part, I will do the, the spiritual part. You move the stone, I will raise him up. Now that gives us another avenue to realize that God wants us to do something ourselves. For instance, you have, say a sickness or something, and you do nothing and god says why do you expect me to heal you you do nothing to help yourself there's certain things we can do to help ourselves but if you will do something for instance i had this knee problem here for a few weeks it was bothering me and thoughts were flashing to my mind which the devil does oh you you better go and have a knee replacement you better i walk and i, I this pain would crack and i would shout in pain Anyway, the devil says you better go and have a knee replacement because blah blah blah, bone is rubbing to bone there and what have you, and, and you got to do something about it. And I said to myself, yeah, I do something about it. I pray to the Lord, and nothing was happening. So, not long ago, three four days ago, I got up and the pain was excruciating, and I said, the wife said, get a couple of Panadols, osteopanadol, to relieve the pain. I said, I don't want to live with, with. pain kill us all my life and I said Lord Jesus I want you to heal me because I spoke the words I said Lord please heal my knee because I need to walk with hard drugs with hard medication and with your healing and you know what I felt like I almost saw Jesus face smile at me and the pain did disappear I never had another pain on my knee since then. how could it be before that every second every step I put down it was agony and now he will totally heal Amen. that's the power in the words Amen. of god i'm going to come back to the um, resurrection of lazarus again first of all jesus uh, <laughs> used <laughs> remove the stone the second time jesus spoke to the dead body yeah. i'm going to say something yeah. um, i felt to say <laughs> share something okay. um, from the same um, yeah. passage jesus spoke to lazarus dead body he said like that lazarus come forth see god used the word again yeah. jesus never walked inside and he rolled the dead body no i uh, you know i i believe that you know some people were expecting that because jesus asked to move the stone the people uh, rolled out the stone from the mouth of the tomb then uh, jesus went next to the tomb he raised his voice and said lazarus come forth immediately lazarus came out but bible says that uh, i was studying this um, uh, passage for over months and months one of the scripture um, stuck me and i'll read for that um, john chapter 11 44 and he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was wrapped with a cloth Jesus said to them loose him and let him go hmm. look at that bible clearly says that lazarus came out with a bound hand even there was a handkerchief was upon his head according to uh, their trad- jewish tradition when they bury a person they used to use the grave cloth okay, they, yeah grave cloth they hmm. used to cover all over the body not only that they used to wrap 
around yeah. the body, body and like bandages yeah bandages and they use a handkerchief to cover the uh, face but lazarus came out without removing the grave clothes or handkerchief how did mm-hmm. lazarus came yeah. out ah, that's my my question ah, i was you. praying and asking to god lord how would, how it's happened yeah. bible clearly says that lazarus came out yeah. with the grave clothes um, his uh, hands and legs were bound with the grave clothes his um, head was covered with the handkerchief uh, then how he came out walked out then god spoke to me see god created the world with the power mm. jesus used the power even whatever god created created through jesus christ jesus was in the beginning he was in the creation he was in the creation he was in the beginning without him nothing were created mm, yeah. when jesus released the word lazarus come forth immediately the grave clothes responded to his voice yes, hallelujah yeah. look at that immediately the resurrection power came upon the grave clothes he straight away the grave clothes responded to his voice Lazarus came out but the still the grave clothes were uh, upon him but the supernatural power of the holy spirit went to the grave clothes and the power of the holy spirit brought him out he didn't walk by himself then jesus told to the disciples again he found out that jesus found out that even lazarus cannot walk mm. he cannot see anything he found out that difficulty for walking and communicating immediately jesus said to the disciples loose him and let him go hallelujah mm. see that means god kept some people in god's kingdom to loose to release the power of god upon your life mm. certain um, certain oppressions or certain chains you cannot break by yourself but you have to depend upon the anointing of the holy spirit see here jesus used people to do that job jesus said loose him and let, let him go, go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, at the end of this session, we are going to pray for you. I tell you, God is going to loose you from certain things. Wherever the devil is crippling you, wherever the devil is binding you with chains, I'll tell you, nothing is impossible with our God. For men it is impossible, for with God all things are possible. He is going to release his power and he is going to set you free from that demonic oppression. He is going to set you free from that chain. You are not going to see that demonic oppression in your life anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel like that God's anointing is upon my body I tell you there's the power in your words we are going to set you free in the name of Jesus see God kept people in the Christ body to help you and equip you you have to depend uh, we have to believe the heavenly divine provisions look at that Jesus said loose him and let him go Again Jesus used the words hallelujah there is a power in our words mm. well I'll continue for a couple of minutes yes the same thing happened to Jesus when he was on the tomb yeah the angel came and rolled the stone away yeah and Jesus rose triumphantly with glory and majesty unimaginable to humanity and when the disciples came they found the grave cloth and in actual fact the napkin that was on his face it was folded away beside the tomb and John the apostle said now i believe but when jesus rose up the holy spirit used the power to destroy the grave cloth whatsoever yeah. and he rose triumphantly bless the lord the uh, same thing happens to us when we speak anything in our lives and use the name of Jesus there's so much power in the name of Jesus that when you say something for instance whatever in the name of Jesus always use the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I take authority over this over that over the rain over the what have you I take authority in the name of Jesus you speak words you will do nothing until you speak it the same with the bible it's just another book unless you operate and speak the word that is here here 
as a quick example, Romans chapter 10, verse 13 says that whoever calls on the name of Jesus shall be saved. Not whoever mimics and sits like a dummy, but whoever calls on the name of Jesus shall be saved. Amen. That's, That's amazing. I want to uh, connect with uh, empty tomb. Yeah. No, early in the morning, May, Martha and Mary and all the yeah. women came to um, put spices upon Jesus' body. They found out that the stone has moved away. Um, you say, the Bible says, the angel has moved the stone. But even the grave clothes, you know, he, Jesus removed by himself and he kept in one side, it was folded nicely. Even, sorry, the, hem, the head covering. Mm -hmm. He removed yeah, yeah. the head covering, he folded nicely and hipped one side, he resurrected from the dead. See, in um, Jesus never asked any help to resurrect because the power of God came upon him. He never used any people help because he was a God. He resurrected by the power of the Holy Spirit. He removed the barrier in between people and the God. So uh, we have, we can, every individual can access into the throne of grace through Jesus Christ. We don't have any other mediator at all. We have only mediator that is Jesus. Hallelujah. Many times people is searching for the mediators. People are praying for the saints. People are praying for that people. People are worshipping idols. People are worshipping mountains. People are worshipping uh, living creatures. But I'll tell you, uh, there, there is no power in that. But if you want to see the real supernatural power, you have to believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. No other God died for you. Only Jesus Amen. died for your yeah. sins. Hallelujah. No other God is going to die for your sins. Only Jesus died. Christ died for your sins. You have to remember one thing, there is a power in your words. We are going to come back to the subject again. Jesus spoke to the fig tree. The fig tree immediately withered away. So how, it, how, how did it happen? See, there is a power in the words. If you are ready to use the power in a proper, if you are ready to use your words, Properly, I tell you, you will see many blessings in your life. That's very important. You have to be very wise about how to use your words. Mm. Hallelujah. Great authority. If you want to learn one thing from our lesson, just one thing only, that when you speak anything, always speak it in the name of Jesus. You must realize the power that is behind that name invested. Excuse me. God invested the power of the universe behind that name. So when you say whatever in the name of Jesus, Jesus. The, the Bible says that them, the demons flee for cover. The moment you mention, I could give you examples of people what happened, but yeah. not for time now. But I suffice to say that you use the name of Jesus, that's what the power is. You can't use the name of Albanese or to say the name of the prime minister or the name of your friend. Or I can't say the name of Kixi. If they have, nothing will happen. But once I say in the name of Jesus, ho oh, oh, the power of God comes because God always answers. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. John, the gospel, Jesus said, wherever you ask the Father in my name, I will do it to you. One day Peter and John went to the temple. He, they found this, they have seen there was a beggar. He yeah. was begging and asking alms from Peter and John. Then immediately Peter and John said, no, look at us, we don't have, then this beggar was, uh, he had a great expectation. He looked at Peter and John. Uh, he was thinking they are going to get a lot of things. He's going to get a lot of money. But Peter and John said, see, um, we are going to stop your begging today. You are, you are looking for a temporary solution, but we are going to give you a permanent solution. Man, no, Hallelujah. No, no. Because what Peter said, Peter and John said, silver and gold I do not have, but I am going to give you something that could not purchase with the silver and gold, that the name of Jesus, I am going to resurrect yeah. you, I am going to raise you today. He used the name, the name of Jesus That's and right. asked him to get up. Immediately, the man became uh, properly healed. Hallelujah. He didn't use the name of the emperor. No, no, he, <laughs> he never used the name of Moses. No, he, he, never exactly. he never used the name of he never used the name of 
or some other politician no Elijah no he Pratham never Jesus used sir. the name of david yeah. but he used yeah. the name of jesus i'll tell you there is a power in the name of jesus if you are ready to use it you will see breakthrough you will see miracles in your life but many times people don't know there is a power in the name, in the of, name jesus. of jesus yes. people are talking about someone else stories people are talking about someone other names but i'll tell you there is a power in the name of jesus so we have to use the name of jesus mm. in your bad situation if we want to change your bad situation into good situation but i'll tell you use the name of jesus yes amen amen hallelujah oh there is power by see there is a power yes, in the name of jesus you know why there is a power in the name of jesus this his name is bigger than any other name Mm. his name is bigger than any other king his name is bigger than any other sickness his name is bigger than money because his name his name is king of kings he is his he, jesus is the uh, he is the alpha and omega he is the life he is the way he is the truth he is the lord of lord he is the king of king he is the resurrection he is the way he is the savior he is our deliverer he is our life he is he holds the power mm. hallelujah see mm. there is a power in the name of jesus to now what is going to happen the every knee shall bow and every tongue is going to confess in the name of jesus i'll tell you your sickness is going to bow down your problem is going to bow down your depression is going to bow down your cancer is going to bow down your that problem is going to bow down your kidney issue is going to bow down your death is going to bow down in the name of jesus how many of you can say how many of you can believe How many of you can agree oh, yeah, with me? Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hi, hi. Yes. Hi. We are go- why we can pray to the people yeah, right yeah, now? Yeah. Hallelujah. See, there is a power in the name of Jesus. Use the name of Jesus. We are going to come back to the subject. There is a power in our words. Mm, yeah. So what do you want to add about the, how we can release the power of God in our life? Well, in actual fact, what we've already talked about, you can release it by speaking God's word that's what the power is in yes. God's word yeah it's not power in reading the novel or something yeah. power in the bible the bible is the greatest book ever written in history of humanity the father this is a gift of the father a, a love letter to his children and when you read the bible some people say oh i find it boring boring i can't stop reading this book i find the most interesting book powerful book in the universe and that's how you can bring glory to yourself to your family by using the word of god amen in every aspect of your life whatever your what's your problem there's something in the bible yes as a quick example are you lacking money go to philippians chapter 4 verse 19 it says my god shall supply all my needs yes, according to his riches and glory by christ jesus and you say well you mean if i read that i'll be blessed you bet you be blessed because The other thing I've learned lately, what God promises for us, say that scripture. Then, if you lack money or something, I don't mean it's, gonna, it's not going to give you a million dollars, but it's going to give you sufficient every day to go by without any restraint. For instance, you can say to the Lord, I lack money, I can't pay my bills, but I pray in the name of Jesus, according to your work, Philippians, that's what you're doing the word. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 my god shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus so you say father this is what you say now i hold you to your word and you bound to fulfill it by your promise because remember god is not a man that he should lie whatever he speaks he speaks the truth as i was preaching today actually the yes. devil is a liar yes. as jesus said he's a liar and the father of lies right. jesus and the father never lie never will never have because you say to the lord this is your word you never lie you got to keep the word father and so let's see if you're going to keep your word the same with my healing for my knee let's see if you you say i'm the lord that healeth thee let's see if you're going to keep your word lord god you put him to the test so to speak you don't tempt god you put him to the test by speaking his word and that's what our father wants us to speak to learn to read and speak his word don't speak death over your life bible says you shall not die 
but live and declare the works of the lord see jesus spoke to the fig tree he cursed the fig tree immediately the fig tree withered away today we are now we are going to curse your sickness yeah. in the name of jesus we are going to curse that death in your life we are going to curse that marriage issues whatever you are facing mm. we are going to curse that sickness in the name of jesus especially we are going to curse the cancer in the name mm. of jesus mm. can we pray for the yes. viewers can you pray for the viewers? father in heaven we come before your Amen. awesome throne and bring into your throne the promises you have promised hand to the whole humanity when you say Exodus 15 verse 26 I am the Lord the healer thee this is the word of the living God that cannot be broken so if you have cancer or whatever you speak this word to the Lord to the father say God this is what you say in Exodus 15 verse let the word let the scripture brothers and sisters don't spend all your time in front of the TV and all other stuff learn to read the word and remember the scripture say this is what you say Exodus 15 verse 26 I am the Lord the healer thee Heal so therefore you got some sickness you say father this is what your word says now I need that healing and I want you to fulfill what you promised to us and God would come to the party because as I said before he wants us to speak his word another example yeah. Oh, yeah we pray right now in the mighty name of jesus we are praying against every kind of cancers the cancer has a name the depression has a name but the name of jesus is bigger than any other names we are going to pray and cast every kind of sickness in your body right now we and pastor jim is going to come to an agreement we are going to uh, pray together for you in the mighty name of jesus every cancer cells die from the roots right now in the mighty name of jesus be healed right now hallelujah let the spirit of death leave from the people right yes. now we curse that cancer right now in the mighty name of jesus you have a goit in your body goiter is living right now in the mighty name of jesus every kind of kidney issues living right now in the mighty hallelujah. name of jesus be healed right now let the healing power is coming upon you right now receive the healing wherever you are especially every kind of arthritis the joint pains leave right now in the yes. mighty name of jesus every kind of migraine leave from the people right now especially i pray against every kind of depression the spirit of depression leave from the people right now be free now in the mighty name of jesus every kind of addiction alcoholic addiction drug addiction pornographic addiction every kind of internet addiction gambling leave it right now in the mighty name of jesus we are releasing the anointing over you in the name of jesus be free now i bind that chain whatever enemy put in your spirit right now i bind it in the mighty name of jesus let the power of the holy spirit is going to come upon you right now he is going to set you free now be free in Hallelujah. jesus name let the power of the holy spirit let the supernatural power of the holy spirit flow through the people right now in the mighty name of jesus Lord we come against every kind of challenges every kind of mental sickness Lord we pray in the mighty name of Jesus the healing power flow through your body right now in Jesus name in the name of Jesus amen and amen, amen. Yeah. thank you for watching this video i tell you there is a power in your words read the word of god meditate the word of god apply it use it in your life you will see the change in your life god bless you thank Hallelujah. you pastor Amen. thank you for your time god bless you bless the lord too